Hello Divination and welcome. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to design a hero section with custom transitions and animations in Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. All right. So the first thing we need to do is to create a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here, click on add new. We're going to give this page a name. I'm just going to call this hero. Use Divi Builder. And for this design, we're going to build everything from scratch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on start building. All right. So now that we have our layouts, I'm going to go into my section settings. And the first thing we need to do is to add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to design spacing. And for our padding here, I'm just going to add zero both to the top and the bottom because we don't want any spaces in there and then hit save. Next, we need to add our column structure. So I'm going to click on this plus button and we are going to go with a single column. And then I'm just going to close this for now. Now we need to go into the row settings because that's where we're going to add our gradient. So I'm going to click on this gear icon and then we're going to come over here to the background, click on the second tab, and then we're going to add our first color by clicking here. Now the colors I'm going to use throughout this tutorial are all going to be in the video description below. Next, I'm going to add my second color. So I'm just going to paste it here like that. Right, so next I need to uh, add an image. So to do that, I'm going to come over here to the third tab, click on the plus button. And I have some images in my media library here. So the one I'm going to use is this one here. But in your case, if you want to use a different image, you can always use the dimensions of 12, 1920 by 1280. I'm going to hit upload. And then I'm also going to add a blending mode. So I'm going to come down here, click on image blend and choose multiply. There we go. All right. So now that I have my image and I have my blending mode, the next step now is to adjust my gutter width. So to do that, I'm just going to scroll back and um, go back here to my design tab. And then I'm going to hit sizing. So for my gutter width, now the gutter width is a space between the columns. So I'm going to activate it and set this to one. And then I'm going to go for my maximum width and set this to 100%. And also here on my width, 100%. Now for my padding, I also need to set it up to zero, both to the top and the bottom, as we did with the section. So I'm going to add my zero here. Click on this chain icon, and that is going to add my zero, both to the top and the bottom. All right, so for our column settings now, we have a bit of CSS code here that is going to do a bit of some styling. So... I'm going to come back over here to content and then click on this gear icon on this column and then go to advanced. Now here is where we need to add our custom CSS. So I'm going to click here on custom CSS and I'm going to paste my CSS code in here. So this CSS code here uh, can be found in the post which I'll link to in the show notes below. So this will just uh, make sure everything is all laid out correctly. So now that I've added this, it's time now to add all our modules. So I'm going to hit save and save one more time. So my first module here is going to be a call to action. So I'm going to search for it and select it. So in this call to action, we can add any information we need here. So uh, you can add any sort of text you want. So for the title here, I'm just going to say, see the world. And for the button here, I'm going to leave it blank. And for the body text, I'm also going to get rid of all of this. And for the background, I don't really like this color here. So I'm just going to make sure that I say no to use background color. Okay, so now that I have that all set, the next step now is to customize my text here. So I'm going to click on this paintbrush tool. So this has taken me now to my heading two. So I'm going to start off by adding my font, which is going to be Oswald. So I'm going to search for it. And here it is a free font, by the way. So you can use this as many times as you want without worrying for licensing. Next, I'm going to come over here to my font weight and we are going to set this to light. And for the style, it's going to be italic. And now let's set our size. So for this, I'm going to set this at 7VW. And then over here on sizing, uh, I'm going to go for our maximum width and I'm going to set this at 50 VW. Okay, right. So now that we have this all set, the next step now is to head over to animation. So here on the animation, I need to choose fade. 
Okay, so this is what we're going to use. So the animation duration is going to be 3000. So I'm going to set it here and we are going to save. Next, we also need to add a divider to this. So I'm going to search for my divider module and select it. So now let's start with our line. So I'm going to come over here to design line and my line color here is going to be white. And then we need our divider weight. So for that, I'm going to come over here to sizing. And for our weight, it's going to be 1 VW. And then for our width, I'm going to set this to 40 VW. So now that we have our divider here, I'm going to go to transform and we are going to choose skew. So here we are going to unlock this so that I can add different sizes here on different axes. So for this one here, I'm going to set this to 45 degrees. So now we have a bit of a style here on our divider. And now let's go to our animation and the animation style this time is going to be a slide and animation duration is going to be 2000 and we also need to add the delay of a thousand. Okay, so that's looking great. So I'm going to come over here to advanced position uh, because here we need to choose absolute. So we want this positioned correctly. So I'm going to choose absolute and this is going to be on the bottom left. And for our vertical offset, we're going to set this to 15 VH. So that's all we need to do for our first part. So I'm going to save this. Next, we're going to duplicate our rows. So I'm going to come over here. This is just going to save us a lot of time. So now I can go into my row settings by clicking on this gear icon. So the first thing I need to do here is come to over here to the background and then go into the second tab. And now I can start adding my colors. So the gradient is going to be this first color here. And I also need to add my second color. So I'm going to paste it in here. There we go. And now I need a new image. So I'm going to click on the third tab. And my image here this time is going to be this one and upload an image. So our image here, our images here are 1920 by 1080. Okay, so now that we have all this set, I am going to now save this and I'm going to go into my call to action. And this time, instead of saying see the world, I'm going to say why wait. And for the button here, I'm going to say view the deal. And for the body, I'm going to set it to get your pair of uh, gloves you love today. And then for the button here, I'm going to add a blank link. But in your case, you need to add a link which will take you to, you know, any place on or any page on your website. All right. So now that we have this, we also need to customize the button itself because right now it's just pretty plain. So I'm going to come over here to design button and activate use custom styles for button. This is what allows us to go in and start making our colors or our changes. So we need to start here with a button background. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and paste my color in here. So you can see now we have a solid color and we also need a border. So I'm going to come over here and add my border. So basically my border is the same color as the button itself. So now we need to update the animation. So I'm going to scroll all the way down here to animation. And what we're going to do here for the animation duration, we're going to set this to 2000 and the animation delay is going to be 4000. So that's pretty much all I need to do here. I'm going to save. Now we're also going to need this divider that we have up here. So I'm going to duplicate it. And now we have it here on the bottom. So now let's work with the divider position. So I'm going to come over here to my divider settings, advanced position. This time I need to have it on the top right. And we also need some animation uh, effects here. So let's go back to animation. So our delay here needs to be 3000 and the intensity is going to be 70. Okay, so the next part now is to go to the rows and I need to set my position for my row. So I'm going to go into my row settings, advanced position. And here we need to set this to absolute. So I'm going to come over here and we also need it set to the top right. And then we are going to set our Z index to 10. Now let's work on our row animation. So I'm going to come over here to, de to design animation and let's choose fade. And for animation duration here, we are going to set this to 2000. 
for animation delay. We're going to set this to 3000. So pretty much this is our design. So I'm going to save this and we are now going to take a look at this and see uh, what our animation looks like. So before actually we go in, I just want to add a blank section here just so that we can see our animation here clearly. Okay, so I am going to now save my page and exit the Visual Builder. So let's take a look now at the animation. So there we go. That's our animation. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.